Hi, I'm Eric Paul, the Chemistry Guru, and you are watching H2 ChemHex, making H2 Chemistry simpler, one video at a time. Hi, in this video, we'll go through the first ionization energy trends across period 2 elements. Now, this discussion is also applicable for period 3 elements. Now, what you notice is in this case, there's a general increase in the first ionization energy across period 2. So, the concept that I use to explain this increase in ionization energy will be our effective nuclear charge. Basically, it is quite simple for us to uh, explain using effective nuclear charge. Now, across the period, there's an increase in the photon number, so therefore, nuclear charge increases. Now, we're also adding an electron to the same principal quantum shell, so therefore, the number of inner shells stays the same and the shielding effect remains constant. So the overall effect is when I increase in the nuclear charge, I have constant shielding effect. The overall attraction between the nucleus and the valence electrons will increase, or the effective nuclear charge increases. Now this means the valence electrons are more tightly bounded by the nucleus, so it requires more energy for me to remove the electron. So therefore, the first ionization energy increases. Now, of course, what we notice is there are two anomalies or two discrepancies which doesn't really obey the effective nuclear charge concept. Now, the first anomaly is between beryllium and boron, our group 2 and group 3 element. Now, the second anomaly is between nitrogen and oxygen, our group 5 and group 6 element. Now, in order for us to explain these two anomalies, of course, we cannot depend on effective nuclear charge anymore. We have to write out the electronic configuration, and by looking at which subshell the electrons are being removed from, we can deduce and explain the differences in the ionization energy. Now, if I look at the first anomaly between beryllium and boron, if I write out the electronic configuration for beryllium, four electrons will just be 1s2, 2s2. Boron are 5 electrons. 1s2, 2s2, 2p, y. So if I consider the first ionization energy for each of my elements, for beryllium, I'm removing the electron from my 2s subshell. Boron, I'm removing the electron from my 2p subshell. Now, what you notice is 2p subshell is further away from the nucleus than my 2s subshell, or you can say that 2p subshell has a higher energy than my 2s subshell. So therefore, it requires less energy for me to remove the electron from 2p subshell. So boron will have a slightly lower first ionization energy than beryllium. Now for the second anomaly between nitrogen and oxygen, we do the same thing. We write out the electronic configuration. For nitrogen, seven electrons. 1s2, 2s2, 2p3 for oxygen, 8 electrons. 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Now, in this case, I'm removing them from the same subshell, 2p subshell for both nitrogen and oxygen. So, what we need to do is we need more detail uh, to draw the electron in box diagram to see how the electrons are arranged. Now, arranging three electrons in my 2p subshell, all of them have to be singly paired and they must have the same speed. Now, for oxygen, I have an additional electron. There's no way else this electron can go, but it has to pair up with this electron in the first orbital. Now, when I want to remove an electron from my nitrogen, I can just take away any of this electron from my 2p subshell because all these three orbitals have the same energy level or they are degenerate. Now to remove the electron from oxygen, what we'll do is we'll take away this electron. Now what you notice in this case is because this electron is sharing the orbital with another electron, it experiences inter-electron repulsion between these two electrons inside the same 2p orbital. So it makes it easier for me to remove this particular electron. So therefore, oxygen will have a slightly lower first ionization energy than nitrogen. 
So after this discussion, I hope that you have a better understanding for our first energy energy cross period two. If you have enjoyed this video, please share this with your friends. To learn more about H2 chemistry, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. If you want to know more about my H2 chemistry classes at Nishan, please visit my website. Thank you for watching H2 Chem Hacks. I hope I've made H2 chemistry simple for you. I'll see you next time.